Hey everyone, this is Nick, and GNOME has a reputation for not being very customizable and being pretty limited. And while that is true on the surface, GNOME still has a ton of hidden options and features that you can enable. Whether these options and settings should be part of the default GNOME experience and should be user accessible immediately, that's a debate I will not enter because that would take its very own dedicated video on the merits of UX simplicity versus complexity. But I'm still going to tell you about a ton of these tweaks, options, settings, keyboard shortcuts that will make your GNOME experience way more powerful and way more productive. And of course, if your favorite tweak, setting, option, shortcut is not in this video, don't hesitate to let other viewers know in the comments because, well, it's always nice to share information. Just like it's always nice to share this segue to today's sponsor who's gonna let you monitor and secure your internet connection. This video is sponsored by Safing. They make the Portmaster, which is an amazing tool that lets you control and monitor your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface. You get block lists, you get profiles depending on your current connection, and you can even tweak settings per app. It's also completely open source and free. Safing also makes the SPN or Safing Privacy Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. With the SPN you can be everywhere at once and no website can build a profile from your visits and your location. Of course, you also get all the benefits from a traditional VPN. If that's something you'd like to try, and if you want to help support Safing's open source work, you can subscribe to the SPN right now, or download the Portmaster by heading in the link in the description below. Okay, let's get started with extensions and GNOME tweaks. These are topics a lot of you probably already know. If that's the case, move on to the next chapter in the video. But if you're unsure about extensions or GNOME tweaks, stick around. So first, extensions. GNOME has multiple options to completely change how it works or just add small utilities. And these are called extensions. The Ubuntu dock, that's an extension. The Zorin OS bottom panel, that's an extension. The Manjaro dock, extension again. There are tons of these and you can get to them super easily thanks to a little program called Extension Manager. Not only does it let you handle all the extensions you have installed and their own settings, but you can also find the ones you want, thanks to a handy search engine. Among those that I use or have used, there's dash to dock or dash to panel to add a dock or a permanent panel to your GNOME interface. There's app indicator support to add a system tray. GS Connect to add KD Connect support to GNOME. Night Theme Switcher to allow you to switch from dark to light mode automatically. Or CoverFlow Alt Tab, which makes alt tabbing look a lot better. Whatever the extension you want, you can find it in Extension Manager. Each extension has screenshots, description, and a support status that will tell you if it works on your GNOME version or not. I already have a full video on GNOME extensions. It's in the card up top. Check it out if you want to know more. Second is GNOME Tweaks. It's a handy little utility that exposes some options graphically that are not by default in the GNOME settings. And to circle back to the question in the introduction of the video, Yes, basically all the options in GNOME Tweaks should absolutely be part of the default GNOME experience. They're basic and they should be there. So Tweaks has sound over amplification. It has theming choices, font customization, extended keyboard and mouse options. It handles startup applications. It lets you tweak the top bar, the window title bars, and the actions you can do on that. Or even how you handle your windows, like how they're focused, if the modal dialogues are attached to the window or not, there's just a ton of things in GNOME Tweaks. So if that's something that might interest you, you can find it in your graphical app store. Whatever the distro, it's 99% chance it's in there. And interestingly, all these options that GNOME Tweaks provides, they're all handled through dconf, which is a sort of hidden thing that GNOME uses for options that are not exposed to the user. And that's the main thing we're gonna use in this video to basically tweak your GNOME. So let's start with some power options. GNOME now has the ability to switch power profiles, but it can go further. For this, you'll need to install dconf editor. It's very, very likely to be in your software store, so just look it up and install it. 
Deconf Editor is a small graphical utility that lets you access and interact with GNOME's options and tweaks hidden database. And if this database reminds you of something, for example, the Windows registry, then yes, you're right, it's exactly the same thing. Apart from the fact that GNOME's registry is actually super legible, super well thought out, easy to navigate and easy to use. So basically nothing like the Windows registry. So let's go back to power settings. To access these, you'll need to navigate to org, then gnome, then settings daemon, then plugins, and finally power. In here, you have a long list of stuff you can tweak. You can disable the ambient light sensor to always have brightness on your laptop set as you like it. You can change the idle screen brightness your monitor will go to when it's been inactive for a while, or disable that behavior entirely. You can change the action when pressing the power button. You can enable or disable the power saver profile when your laptop's battery is low, or even the type of sleep your computer will enter when inactive, like regular sleep, hibernate, or completely shutting down. It's a pretty handy list of things that GNOME doesn't let you change out of the box, but you can still change. Now let's talk Nautilus. If you think Nautilus is a weak file manager that lacks options and tools, well, stick around because this is probably the app you can tweak the most. First, not specifically linked to Deconf, but there are two keyboard shortcuts that you might want to use. The first one is Ctrl plus H to display and hide hidden folder and files. It's very, very useful. And the second one is to actually be able to edit and type in the path bar. By default, you cannot type anything in there, but if you press Ctrl plus L, now you can. And if you want to always be able to type stuff in here, then you can head over to Deconf, go to org, Gnome, Nautilus, Preferences, and check Always Use Location Entry. And here you go, you have a regular typable path bar. You can also decide to change which format will be used to compress files. By default, it's zip, but you could use tar.exe, 7-zip, or encrypted zips. For that, head over to Org, Gnome, Nautilus, Compression. Now, of course, that's all handled through Deconf, but there are also other things not Deconf related, other small hidden things that you can do to make Nautilus better. Small tropes and nonsense. <coughs> Sorry about that. So first, did you know that you can have a right-click menu to have various new file types you can create? In your slash home folder, you have a templates folder on most distributions. If you don't, you can create it. Everything you put in there will show up in a right-click new document menu. Just create a blank file from your text editor, your word processor, your spreadsheet, or even GIMP, and give them the name you want, and put them in the templates folder. Once that's done, just right-click in any blank space in Nautilus, and you'll get that new document menu, which will list everything you put in the templates folder. Extremely useful and also extremely mystifying that most distros don't put files in there by default. Like, that's really useful, seriously. Now, if you want more interaction with your files, you also have a nice set of plugins you can install. First is image manipulation, and you can just install, either from your package manager or from the terminal, the package called nautilus-image-converter. Once that's done, completely quit Nautilus by typing Nautilus-Q in a terminal. And now, when you reopen it, you can right-click an image or a selection of images, and you can either rotate them or resize them, individually or in bulk, with various options. If you use Nextcloud and would like quick options to share files, copy their public links or private links, you also can. Install the Nextcloud-Client-Nautilus package, Restart Nautilus, and here you go. If your Nextcloud account is configured in GNOME's online accounts, you can just right-click any file and share it or copy its link. It also works for own cloud with the own cloud-client-nautilus package. What, you want more Nautilus tweaks? Okay, I got more. If you need to quickly access your recent locations, you can right-click the back or forward button to get a list of all the folders you accessed recently in the current Nautilus tab. If you want to change a specific folder's icon to make it more memorable, you also can. Right-click the folder, hit Properties, then just click on the folder's icon and go fetch the image you want to use. And that folder will use that image now. So you could have, for example, various colored folders and do it this way. 
If you don't want that specific image anymore, you can do the exact same procedure, but hit the revert button in the top right corner of the file picker. Okay, one last. You can also have the same experience as Quick Look on macOS. Select the file, press the space bar and get a quick preview. For that, all you need is GNOME Sushi, which you can install from the extensions list of Nautilus, straight from the App Store of GNOME, or by installing the GNOME Sushi package from your package manager or the terminal. Once that's installed, just hit spacebar when you have a file selected, and if that's the file type Sushi can handle, you'll get a quick preview, as well as a quick button to open it in the default app. It works with images, videos, text files, open document formats, Microsoft Office files, and a lot more. And now let's move on to a grab bag of small tweaks and cool options you can apply to GNOME in general. If you want to adjust your volume by smaller or bigger steps than the default, you can. By default, when increasing or decreasing the volume using media keys, you're doing so by 6% increments. But with Deconf, you can change that. Head over to org, GNOME, Settings Daemon, Plugins, Media Keys. And there you can find an option named Volume-Step, which you can change to whatever you want. 1%, 10%, 100%, whatever you decide. And here you can also remap all your media keys to do what you actually want them to do. GNOME introduced overlay scroll bars a while ago. And so these scroll bars only show up when you actually scroll or hover over them, in which case they get bigger. Well, if that's a behavior you don't like, you can also change it. Head over to Org, Gnome, Desktop, Interface, and then disable overlay scrolling. Your scroll bars will now be permanently visible. You might have to restart your apps though. If you don't like having an image as your wallpaper and would prefer just a color or a gradient, you can either create an image yourself or use, you guessed it, Deconf. Go to Org, Gnome, Desktop, Background and set picture URI to none. Then, in the same folder of deconf, in primary color, enter the hexadecimal value for your color, which you can get using the GNOME Color Picker app. And if you want a gradient, also set the secondary color to the other one you want for your gradient, so primary color to secondary color, and then you enable the color shading type horizontal or vertical option, depending on the gradient direction you want. And there, now you can feel like you're using a very old computer or very old OS. Who needs shiny desktop backgrounds when you're gonna cover them with filthy desktop icons anyways? Now, if you feel like window borders are too small to comfortably resize your windows, then you can expand them. You can change their size by going to Org, Gnome, Mutter, and changing the draggable border width value. The bigger it is, the further away from a window you can be, before the little resized cursor shows up. Here you can also disable edge tiling if that's something that annoys you, if you have dual monitors, for example. Now, if you often log out, you can have the option to do so always visible in the main GNOME Shell menu by going to Org, GNOME, Shell, and turning on Always Show Logout. These are just a few examples, and you could probably lose yourself in the number of options and tweaks you can find in Deconf. Of course, you could also destroy your system or at least brick GNOME. So be careful when moving around in there and make sure that you use the normal values. Don't try to type anything yourself that you're not sure about because, well, accidents happen. Okay, let's conclude the video with a few handy keyboard shortcuts you might not know about. The first one is Alt plus F2. Pressing this allows you to run a quick command to start an app or even just type the traditional X kill if you're using X.org to click on a window and terminate it immediately. If you use multiple windows of the same app and you want to switch quickly between them, you can use Alt Tab to focus the app and then navigate to the right window. Or you can use Alt plus the key that's located immediately above Tab on your keyboard to only switch between the open windows of the currently focused app. Then for screenshots, you have Print Screen to display the screenshot utility. But if you press Alt plus Print Screen, you automatically capture the current focused window. And Shift plus Print Screen automatically captures the whole screen without any interaction needed. You can also press Ctrl plus Alt plus Shift plus R to automatically open this interface in video recording mode. Press Enter and your screen recording starts immediately, no click needed. And that's almost as many keys as a basic macOS keyboard shortcut. You do need more than 10 fingers to activate most of these. 
Now Control, Alt and Delete will show you the power of dialog, which is less useful than a full-blown task manager, but still. Hitting the super key once will show you the activities view, but if what you want is the list of apps, then hit the super key twice quickly. It's super handy to start a new work session, as from that view, you can just drag the app icons to their desktop in a row to open them all in different workspaces without having to enter or quit the activities view. To display the notifications pop up and focus it to use with the keyboard, you can press super plus M and then the arrow keys to navigate notifications and either enter to open one or delete to remove it. And while GNOME doesn't have a default show desktop shortcut, although some distros might have added one, you can add your own in the keyboard shortcuts preferences. Search for hide all normal windows and enter what you want as a key combination. Pressing that will automatically minimize everything, pressing it again will restore everything. And you probably know that by holding the super key, you can drag a window by clicking and dragging from anywhere inside of the window. But if you press super and use the middle mouse button on the window, you can resize it instead, which is super handy. And we're going to stop there because that's already a pretty long video and that's already a lot of options and tweaks. So what I would recommend is if GNOME doesn't exactly suit your needs, first try out extensions and GNOME tweaks. If that's not enough, then open dconf and enable or disable the things I talked about or more. Just do be careful to really only use the options that they provide and don't try to type anything weird in there because you could break your GNOME system from there. So if you have handy keyboard shortcuts, options, tweaks and stuff like that that you want to let other people know, just head over to the comments and tell everybody about those because, well, I might not even know about them, so I might be interested to learn about them. Just like you might be interested to learn about our sponsor, Tuxedo. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany and they make laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. You can actually pick from a selection of very popular distros, but you can also just install your own distro that you like because basically the hardware supports Linux. And if there are a few tweaks needed here and there, Tuxedo has PPAs and repos you can add so you can install the right packages to make sure the experience is golden. Tuxedo has a nice big range of devices from small ultrabooks, Nox to gaming towers, workstations, gaming laptops and everything in between. And every device is very configurable with CPU options, GPU options, RAM, SSDs, hard drives, Blu-ray drives, you name it, you have options galore. And you can even have your own graphics design engraved, either on the case or on the lid of a laptop. And they have tons of various keyboard layouts that you might want to use. So if you need a new device and you want to make sure that it runs Linux perfectly, head over to the link in the description below and click it and grab yourself a laptop or desktop from Tuxedo. They are really, really nice. I use the Tuxedo Stellaris 15 as my own laptop, so that should be telling. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to help me make more of these videos and you want to support the channel, there's a super thanks button underneath the video, there's a PayPal link in the description, or you can join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!